I, I just want to share a little bit. I was sharing on uh, uh, Monday uh, about what the Lord's doing with me in Song of Solomon and and, uh, and the Lord just touching my heart with that whole reality. And again, a lot of us have so many ideas. Again, my own personal journey, you know, I remember the Lord hit me with the book of Song of Solomon about eight years ago, and it was actually the book of Jeremiah that actually opened up the door for me into Song of Solomon. I remember reading the book of Jeremiah and just feeling the heart of the, the God who is a bridegroom, the God who is a husband, and he loves his people so much that he will remove every obstacle, he'll remove every hindrance, he'll remove everything in the world just so that he can have her heart. Now in Jeremiah's case, that was very intense because that meant that the Lord was sending an army, Babylonian army from the north to come and besiege Jerusalem, take her into captivity so that she could come back and inherit the land and the promises of God again. But as I read the heart of the bridegroom God in Jeremiah 2, Matter of fact, the words that just undid me in Jeremiah 2 is that Jeremiah starts the season off to Jerusalem. The first words out of the prophet Jeremiah's mouth was, I remember you and the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal. And we see that even the heart of a God, of God who is about to judge his people, about to release discipline upon his people, that we see at the heartbeat of it all is a heart of a broken-hearted husband who has seen his wife run after other lovers, give herself to other affections, other idols, other word, other other lovers, and the heart of God in it all is a broken-hearted husband that says, I want you to be close to me. I want you to be close to me. I gave myself to you, and all that I've dreamed about is that you would give yourself back to me. And that's really the heartbeat of the whole prophetic call. That's really the heartbeat of Christianity and all is the God who will not stop at nothing to have the full love of his people. And as I read that in those early days, I got so wrecked over the heart of God that he's not just some objection, he's not just some objective uh, judge at a distance without any emotions, but that our God is an emotional God. He has emotions. He, he is kind and tender. He is, he feels. And as the revelation of God as an emotional God, begin to hit my spirit, I just fell in love. It awakened me to the God who's after something. And it was that that caused me to launch into Song of Solomon to say, you know what, the God who'll come after me and stop at nothing to have my heart, I will sit before you. Come and awaken that love that burns in your heart. Come and awaken it in me. And I, and I just want to encourage you, again, you know, I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm an athletic kind of guy. I'm, you know, it's naturally not going into that kind of uh, of mentality as that book that a lot of us are kind of there's so many kind of walls that keep us from getting into it but I want to encourage you the Lord wrecked me about eight years ago with that and it's just been building seasons will hit me throughout the last eight years and I'm in one of those seasons again to where the Lord is just calling me especially there in the summer season just setting before him and just doing the first John I love that first John 419 it says we love him because he first loved us and that is a powerful principle right there is that you and I are called to be recipients, that you and I can only love Jesus, can only love God to the degree that we are receiving fresh revelation of his love for us. And as the revelation of his fresh love for us hits us, that awakens a corresponding love for him and for others. And we don't function right unless we are receiving fresh releases of the love of God. And when it hits us, that awakens us. I love John the Baptist. He goes, a man can receive nothing unless it's been given to him from heaven. And that's what happens is that we receive the affections of Jesus and that awakens affections for Jesus. And, and we're going to keep building on this. I want to do a couple of days on just this reality of posturing ourselves in a receiving posture to receive the affections of Jesus. And that's what will awaken us for love for him. I want you to even begin to ask this. I like turn this into your prayer language and say, God, awaken love for Jesus in me.